so I did go in and get me a good old cold drink and uh, I have been pulling a lot of um oh I don't know what this tall grass is called I think it's Johnson weed or something like that it's not um we have changed and uh, got me a drink <laughs> and now I can talk uh got my tripod out all right so now we can talk my little uh look here I have these kind of things all over my little herb garden. That one has gotten knocked down by the beans. This is the Christmas beans growing on here. Anyway, okay. So, I let my herb garden get out of hand uh, because we had built these six raised beds. I say we. Lee built me... <laughs> six raised beds uh, probably three years ago now and um, when we first built them we put um, you know I put logs I put down uh, newspaper and then logs and branches and leaves and stuff like that and then we filled them up with a good um, compost um, a um, the first kind we got was a mulch compost. And then a little later, we got a leaf compost, which was way better. Loved the leaf compost. So we topped them off with leaf compost. And um, we didn't have any weeds. I didn't have any weeds until this year. And this year, for whatever reason, uh, you know, I don't know, birds fly by seeds blow in the wind and of course we are surrounded by um trees and fields and and um uh, uh, uh fence lines and things where there are lots of weeds and things so i'm assuming the wind blows some of them over and um whatever birds drop them i don't know but we ended up with weeds this year um and some of it wasn't too bad, but some ends, which you'll see, some ends of the herb garden that I didn't have a lot planted in really got taken over by the weeds. So, um, back to what my first plan was. Let me back up to where my first plan for these, er, this herb garden, these beds, was to have certain herbs that were my favorites. My favorite um, edible and medicinal. I like herbs that are both edible and medicinal and um, uh, or strongly medicinal that I really needed. You know what I mean? Like echinacea. So I have a good standing of echinacea and this year I am going to get some root off of that. So far all I've gotten off of it was the flowers um, in the fall before they start dying off and making a tincture with that. So I have tincture made with the echinacea flowers. I made a little more this year, but I'm also this year going to do some root because it is well established and I won't hurt it by getting some of the root out of there at all. <laughs> so I'm going to do some root this year on that. Uh, but anyway, um, so I have, my plan was to have about two herbs that, per bed. So in that way, I could have 12 of my favorite herb that is, uh, that is, um, <clears throat> that was perennial, um, to, to stay there, you know, to, um, to just establish a good bed of two herbs per bed. That would give me 12 of my favorite herbs to have in here. Well, when I first started, I didn't have good established plants. I was starting with young, you know, one small young plant maybe. And uh, so I went ahead and planted around those, I planted um, vegetables or annual herbs like basil. So, um, I also had done, <laughs> uh, almost to my regret, I had done a lot of um, marigolds 
and some zinnias. I didn't go overboard with the zinnias, but I definitely went overboard with the marigolds, y'all. <laughs> Too many marigolds. And if you know marigolds, when they start dying, the seeds fall out and you've got that many more, uh, three times that many next year. So I have really kind of fought the marigolds for this bed. And so just now, uh, just now this morning and yesterday morning, I was out here yesterday morning before it got hot. Uh, this bed stays shaded until about 11 o'clock. So uh, it gets full sun from about a little after 11 to about five. So um, it works really well. That works really well for herbs. My herbs do great here. But anyway, uh, so the one thing that doesn't do great here, I can tell you right now, is something I'm looking at right now is pepper plants. The pepper plants do not get enough sun here. Tomatoes do okay. Uh, probably would do better in full sun. Uh, but these pepper plants, I don't know. They don't, they don't never do too good here. I get a few, but I don't get a lot. The chickens are going wild, sorry. <laughs> um, so, um, so a little later, Lee put me up these trellises. I have two um, trellises and one that's kind of a fence. It's a trellis, but it's just a fence. These are arches. Um, and I grow some stuff on them. I done, uh, the first year I done uh, Kajari melons on them which done okay until the stink bugs come along, the squash bugs came along. And uh, last year I done scarlet runner beans on here that done really good. It was beautiful, but I didn't get a whole lot of beans off of them. This year I decided to do the Christmas beans and uh, I, I didn't do great. They didn't do great is all I can say. Uh, I am getting a lot of uh, seeds off of them. So next year, I kind of plan on maybe doing the Christmas beans up in the big garden on a row fence instead of my, uh, to get more sun. Maybe, maybe it needs more, uh, more fuller sun, but they are beautiful. So, um, so, um, but for, 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 for looks, I would probably go back to the Scarlet Runner Bean on there. So, I had started doing some vegetables in here, and uh, and I've enjoyed that. That's been great, and I'm not going to say I won't do any more vegetables in here because I still have plenty of room, but I do have now to where some of my herbs have taken off and taken over the whole end of a bed, which is what I wanted to begin with, so I'm finally with a lot of it at that point where I wanted to get to in the first place. So I have a whole established uh, echinacea end of, end of my bed that's echinacea. And on the other end, there's nothing. So I need to get something established there. And then on the next side, there's a whole um, going really good. It's not established big yet. I could still plant stuff around it but it is a uh, bee balm. And uh, on the other end, which I'll walk through, I, I have like a whole comfrey taking over one end of a bed. But I also in that same bed have oregano and catnip. The catnip has to go. I need to get the um, comfrey to take over one end and the oregano take over the other end and keep them kind of really separated there in the middle like that. That's what I really want. So that's what I'm working on. And I'm finally starting to get there. But now I have to get rid of these weeds. So what I'm going to do is rip out all these weeds. And I'm going to put down newspaper again. But I'll have to put the newspaper kind of around my established herbs so that I don't, um, you know, kill them off or anything. But where I don't have an established herb, I will put down newspaper uh, to hopefully kind of kill them off, maybe even black plastic. But I have newspaper. I work for the newspaper, so I have plenty of newspaper uh, access. So 
I'll use newspaper probably. But anyway, uh, get those killed off. And then we will come back in. A lot of our soil, our compost, has really settled, settled, settled. I'm assuming those logs and branches underneath have really decayed. And we are down, way down, about a good six inches down where it's settled. So before next growing season, before uh, next spring, we're gonna have to get a whole nother big load of this. Uh, I wanna get the leaf compost, uh, the leaf mulch and, um, and fill these beds back up. That's what we're gonna have to do. But first I'm gonna have to kill off these weeds with the newspaper and, um, and not kill off my herbs and uh, then uh, come in with, um, a, a fill it up with um, new compost. So, having said all that, <laughs> um, I wanted to say that um, a couple of things to beware of. A couple of things to consider if you're doing, doing race beds or you already have raised beds and you're still working on them like me. Um, we used what we had. So uh, the sides of our raised beds are um, old barn tin off the roof of an old barn. The wood he used, he used good uh, treated wood as the posts, but he made a rail around the top of our beds uh, for looks, I guess. I mean, it's not necessary that you have to do that. But around the top of our beds, he put wood. Um, I'll show you. You can see the wood along the top here, the rail, um, is not treated. And they have fallen apart now and just really crumbling and falling apart now after three years. Um, so that's a warning. <laughs> if you can use a better material, but if you can't, that's fine too. Use what you got and replace it later. If that's all you can do like us at the time, that's what we had. We didn't have money for more. We'd already put a lot of money into this. So he used that and, um, and it has held up good for three years, you know, but now it needs to be replaced and we will replace it before spring before the next growing season all right so i'm going to turn you around and show you my beds and show you what i've got established and i'll show you that horrible grass that has gotten in a couple of them pretty bad but i have been pulling a lot of it out i promise along with marigolds so there is my echinacea it is a good established plant. Like I said, I'm going to dig up some of that uh, root this year and use some of that. And my little fence, I had, uh, I've had cucumbers and um, uh, different things growing on that. I was trying to think of what I had the first year growing on there. Um, oh, I know, I tried to grow um, uh, Malabar spinach on it and it didn't, the Malabar spinach just didn't kind of stay on the fence it kind of went straight out you know uh if you know malabar spinach you know it didn't really stay on the fence like i thought it would anyway here is some of that johnson grass and it is just it's hard to pull out and it is just hanging out over the side here i didn't have all i had in the this end of the of the bed was some um i had cabbage and then when i pulled the cabbage out I had planted some uh, cilantro. I've already used all that. And I had a tomato plant that didn't do too good. And I've done pulled it out. And uh, so that's kind of all of that. I had a, um, I had a thyme right here. And I don't know if it will come back out. But those weeds had gotten so bad they shaded it. So I don't know if that'll come back out or not. Probably not. But I used some of it. I did get some of my thyme out of there before the weeds kind of really took it over. So that's that bed. 
And so what I have in there is the echinacea and I want to get something else established on that end down there and just have the two plants. And then maybe I'll grow a little something in between, maybe basil or, you know, something that I can keep small and annual and, you know. So this bed is pretty empty. Uh, I did pull most of the weeds out down there. There you can see where that rail is falling apart. This is my bee balm that my friend recently gave me. My friend Lana recently gave me this bee balm and it's doing really well here. So that will be an established plant here if I can keep it. And there's that pepper plant that's not doing real good. So, um, you know, some vegetable like that, I don't mind having it in here that's not bothering anything else. So I may do that, but it probably won't be a poblano pepper. Okay, the next bed looks pretty bad. <laughs> So this bed does not have any established herb in it. And I've still got a lot of that Johnson grass to get out. Uh, so this bed will be completely covered and killed out for um, uh, this fall or this winter. And then I can put uh, start two uh, good established herbs in there that I want to keep and have around. So that's kind of a blank canvas once I get that out of there. All right. Christmas beans. Okay, this one, this has several in it. Nothing down here really, but I have this um, lemon basil that I would like for it to kind of spread out over there. Oh, it smells so good, but it's not really doing what I want it to do. And that's a lavender. Now, I don't think that my lavender will um, hold good here through the winter. So, I will probably dig that up and take it in the house and hope I can overwinter it in the house. Uh, and that's that be mealy, mealy blue sage. And on the last video, I showed that was taken over. But it's not anymore because I just pulled a bunch of it out of there. I probably need to move that. I don't uh, use that much. That's not one of my herbs I want to have established in my uh, herb garden. So I will probably dig that up, move it somewhere else, and let it just take over somewhere else where I don't care, you know. <clears throat> and this is some basil. I need to cut some more. I've used a lot of this. But uh, I need to cut some more of it and use it. And one weed got away from me down in there. Okay. And um, so that's coarse annual. So that won't stay. I'll use all that up here real soon and get it gone. I have a yarrow here that um, is new. And I'm hoping that it gets good and established. We do good with the yarrow here, and it should be a uh, perennial that stays. Um, I'm hoping to get that established on this end of that bed. In here, there's my bench. Now, this is an established herb I want to keep forever, and it does well, and it has taken over. It don't look so hot right now because I got dirt all over it, one thing. And it's kind of um, at the end of its season. It's got a little bit of new stuff coming out here. Lemon balm. So that is my established lemon balm bed. Smells so wonderful. I love uh, lemon balm. It's one of my favorites. I will be keeping it and letting it take over half of that bed. Now, for the other half, I don't have anything down there. I had, um, oh, a bunch of marigolds took over. I pulled them out. Here's my, what I pulled out. I've pulled two loads like that out of here. That's my wheelbarrow. <laughs> if you can even see the wheelbarrow underneath there. My wheelbarrow with two loads that I've pulled out of here yesterday and today. And then this is the last bed. So this is my oregano. It's about done. It's about spent for the 
year. It's got a few new things coming out down there, though. I could get a little bit of that. And it's falling all over into the um, comfrey over there. So, oh, the comfrey's falling into it, too. So, that might be something I have to work on is separating those two. <clears throat> but what I'd like to do is keep this oregano down here and get this comfrey to move on down there where that um, dying out is the um, catnip. I want to get rid of that catnip and move it to its own place somewhere. Somewhere on the property, let it take over somewhere else and get this comfrey to spread out on down there. And then my oregano on down here, you know. So I got to separate these two up and get rid of that one. So that's my six raised beds. And, um, you know, if you start them and you want herb beds, but you um, can do like I did, you can um, start little small plants in there and plant other stuff around them until they start getting established like this. And uh, then you can um, do like I'm fixing to do and try to get your bed, your um, herbs separated a little bit and let them take over, <clears throat> let them take over a whole end of the bed. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, that will, you know, like I said, that will give me 12 good established herbs that I use a lot. And what I want to do is uh, learn and know these 12 herbs thoroughly. I want to know them inside and out and upside and down and be able to identify them just by the taste or the smell and know the proper scientific names of them and utilize them in every possible way. So that's my goal is to get 12 established herbs that are good for almost everything. Of course, we've got lots of foraging around here we do. We have playlists on our foraging. Uh, if you haven't seen those, go watch some of our foraging playlists. We've got stuff all around us here to use for food and medicine. Uh, but as far as my herb garden here, I really want to get it established well. I forgot to mention the mint over behind my bench. There is a um, trough <clears throat> that has uh, peppermint in it. And I utilize that a lot. And it uh, it is in a trough. So it doesn't really take over too bad. And it's doing good back there. So there you go. That's what I'm working on and what I'm uh, uh, facing. <laughs> my goal. My goal that I'm working on. And I've got a few more herbs to... Um, get and get established in here you know one thing about it is you learn as you go so um <clears throat> with any herb garden vegetable garden homestead anything you do you don't know it all right away you learn as you go and you might make mistakes that's part of it is to make the mistakes and learn better next year and um and i've certainly done a lot of that and, um, you know, I'm finally, maybe after three years, maybe next year will be my year that I have this herb garden just the way I want it, you know? So, uh, but it's been fun. I'm not going to complain about any of it, except for the weeds this year. The rest of it has been great and fun, and I've enjoyed it, and I've grown a lot of wonderful things out of here. And uh, so, uh, so, there you go. Um, <clears throat> keep learning. And keep growing and uh, give me a thumbs up and comment and subscribe and uh, watch our playlists on foraging.